world number 22. So it's the uh, demon souls that always seem to uh, the do me in the worst, you know what I mean? So those are the ones that typically give me the, 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 the most difficult time. All right, let's get ready for world number 22. So I'm going to uh, be recording a, uh, a guide, which is basically like a quick start guide. So the idea behind it is um, be able to give tips and stuff on being able to make a quick start in this particular pack. So this next world, I will be kind of talking about that like um, for the YouTube version. So I'll be kind of saying, you know, this is the things that we need to do. Um, so I'll word things in a way that kind of, kind of probably sounds strange when you're watching the stream live, but uh, be more or less geared towards making a quick start. So uh, with that being said, what don't we probably do? We'll turn off the stream jar notifications and I'm going to turn off the world information that's sitting right there and I'm going to leave everything else just the way it is but um, you know at the start of this world what I'll do is it'll, it'll be like the start of the recording for the quick start guide so let's do that all right we're gonna get here into our next world and the idea this time around is uh, we're going to look at how to get the quickest start in uh, Sink Into Madness. So there are some different things that you could do to better uh, get yourself set up. So I think one of the primary things that you need to look at when you first spawn into the world is to kind of take a look at the world around you. So one of the things I, I like to do and for myself, it doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to do this, is I like to turn on a magnet mode. So I go in here into this, I change this to world, to put it on utility, and then I turn on the magnet. That's just personally how I like to play it. Uh, it looks like we've got some kind of structure over here in the distance. That'd be really interesting to explore. Let's see if there's anything else. There's a castle off in the distance. Often they contain some very interesting surprises and uh, let's see if we see anything else looks like we have a slime island which may be quite higher than 120 120 that will become important in information later on we'll actually start here first thing we want to do just like traditional uh, sky block is we want to break down that first block and then we're going to take four of these planks and turn it into a crafting table with then turn it into a crafting station and what we're going to do is we're going to hang this off the side of our three by three piece of gra grass here and then the first thing we always like to do is at least what i like to do is get myself two wooden axes that's the first thing then we're going to throw down a couple trees here what we're looking to do is we're looking to get ourselves about a stack and a half uh, a demon soul took me out in the last world, so we're gonna about to get a, a stack and a half of wood. So that gives us a pretty good amount there. Try to break some of these leaves. Actually, don't even have to worry about the leaves necessarily. As long as it's just leaves, then you don't necessarily have to worry about it. So we're gonna tr grow a another tree here. And cut this one down as well. Now there's is things that are going to spawn out of these uh, leaves. So if you're not 100% careful, sometimes you may end up spawning a, a tree ant or uh, some cow pods. Cow pods are basically ants that uh, are amped up. And if you if you get some of the ones that are extremely amped up, they uh, they can they could be a little bit of fun. Alright, looks like we didn't break all of that tree, so I'm going to 
come up here and I'm going to try to break the rest of this. Now, this is a really big tree. Wow, that is a crazy tree. And like I said, from experience, I know that we need about a stack and a half of wood here. So I'm going to take 16 pieces of this and I'm going to turn this into slabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the base out uh, two two blocks on each side. Now, this is kind of like the starting platform that we're going to work off of and this will give us a little bit of room and it'll give us a little bit uh, more you know just area to work in area to catch the uh, the items that fall off the tree and stuff like that which is always a good thing to have and uh, at this point you don't really have to worry too much about the fish that are in the water. They are lichenite mobs in the water, and they will try to come and start messing with you, but uh, it's important to note that those fish will not come and start messing with you until the end of the first day. So, as long as you use your time wisely, you can basically circumvent having to deal with that problem. First thing I'd like to do as well is put down a couple torches here across from that. We're gonna put down another piece of tree and what I want to do before I start breaking that tree is I want to extend the platform back here and we're going to extend back another seven rows. So we're going to do that now. So we'll start counting these off. This is row number one. This is going to be row number two. Row number three. Row four. Whoops, that's okay. Five. I'll break that off of there real quick five row number six and row number seven now i'll fill in the rest of the blocks on the opposite side here and the reason for this is at least from my experience at least the way i like to play it i try to give myself a, a structure or some type of building that i can go into and by making the base this uh this long allows me to make a little building that I can go and live in. Alright, so I'm going to start breaking down some of the rest of these blocks and start building structures. So usually I go one block off from that there and then I basically go and fill in the first layer of this entire room. So you can kind of see the makings of a little structure here so you should go and place two blocks at a time all the way around now remember i had about a stack of oak wood to start out here so it leaves me plenty of wood to basically build this structure and more importantly be able to put a roof on it when i'm done so now you can see i've got 60 a little about 120 blocks left and right now this is three blocks tall I usually like to go about five blocks tall. This gives me plenty of room to move, plenty of room to put everything I need inside of the base and not have to worry about being overextended. Um, one thing that's important in this pack is space management. And you would think space management is something where you would want to use the extra room because you need more room. In this pack, you want to think about space management in the opposite sense. Whereas you want to consume as much space as possible. And the reason why that's important is we're dealing with a mob, a mod in this pack called Lycanites mod. Lycanites. Uh, and Lycanites has special events. And when you are in these special events, mobs will spawn. And then the way that those mobs spawn is they actually take advantage of free space that's around you. So the reason why it's important that you utilize your space as best as you can is because the more open spaces you have, that means the more things that can potentially spawn and kill you. So having a small space that you could utilize that, uh, you know, is going to be the best thing. You don't want to, you don't want to make a building that's super duper huge. All right. So for me, at least in my best practices here, what I like to do is I like to get a gate. So that's going to be two sticks on either side and then the two planks in the middle. And I also like to make a door. Luckily for us, it makes three. Uh, we'll use these later on. So we really only need one for now. I turn around, 
place that backwards like that, and then I put the fence gate there. It allows me to get enough room to get and touch the tree that's in the middle of the island. And it's important that we're able to do this. This is an important mechanic that we're going to take advantage of. And the reason why we're doing this, we also have some half slab over the top of our head, is a lot of these different fish that are in this pack will literally vacuum you off of your island and they will pull you away. So by having this little structure here, it allows us to back up, walk into our house, and have a little bit of safety. So now that we've established a, a, a safe building, we can start looking at some of the beginning quests that are uh, going to be needing to complete. So let's open up our quest book, and we can start looking here. So the very first quest that we're going to encounter is one called Beware. The only thing that you need to know is you need to make a wooden axe. This is going to give you a redstone Vestenberg. This is an airship. We'll learn more about that later. And something called Wilson. You can spend all the time you want exploring it. But what basically Wilson is, it's kind of like a travel buddy. And if you saw there was a movie, you know, the, yeah, you'll get the reference, basically. So, after we've uh, established that, usually I like to place down a couple chests. I need to have somewhere to store my things. So I would advise that, you know, make one or two chests, depends upon whatever you like. We are going to need some of this regular wood out here. Let me grab that real quick. And, uh, you know, next thing on the task list, let's go back to our quest book. And you can hear the fish out there are starting to bite. We're going to make a crook. That's the next thing on our task list, so that's easy enough. And there you go. So you open that up. We can turn that in. That's going to give us eight rubber saplings. It's not important that you use these rubber saplings now, but we will keep them for later. There's going to be some machines that we can use them for. Uh, in my choice, I always choose the torches. We're going to utilize those right away here to light up our structure. So let's go put those around the inside of our room. There you go. That's perfectly fine. And, and anything extra, what I typically do is I try to start throwing some of these different items into the chest. So next on the t task list here is going to be making a barrel, a wooden barrel. You can use these for lots of things. It's a very useful tool to have. In fact, I usually like to make two just in case. So we'll make two barrels now. And then, like I said, space is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find a spot there that is going to be important that we start filling up this room. So that's the next quest, and we can complete that and quickly turn that in. That's going to give us a glass bottle, and we also just need to pick one of these. It doesn't matter which one you pick, you just need to pick one. So there you go, that is the reward bag, and this is the first time you're going to be able to see some of the different things that you can get from reward bags. In this case, we got a desk bell, which is kind of like a troll gift, and necessarily going to do you much good. It makes some uh, interesting sounds if you put it down. Let's just put it over here. That's John Bams that you hear. That's a sound bite and him sneezing. We hit it twice. That's why we got uh, two different sounds. Going back into our quest book, the next thing we want to do is make a hammer. It's a relatively easy recipe. It is going to require some sticks. Take those sticks and arrange them like this. Put the wooden planks there, and there you go. We've got our hammer. Let's go back in and complete another quest. It is a sieve. So it's important to note, how are we going to uh, make a sieve? Well, we're going to need string. So if you know want to get string, you're going to need to plant another tree, apply your bone meal, and then as soon as it's grown, what you're going to do is you're going to want to crook this. You're going to see that you receive silkworms. So we could take those silkworms, and on our very next tree, what we're going to do is we're going to plant those silkworms back into the tree. And what this is going to do, it's going to force a mechanic in the game to convert those leaves into infested leaves, and then slowly they'll turn into some uh, some silk. So the silk, we're going to recrook again, and that's going to allow us to get a pretty good amount of string. So prepare I'm gonna get myself another crook here so we're prepared to get that string in fact I am gonna make a couple sets of crooks because they kind of uh, have a low durability and we kind of use them really fast so we were talking earlier about some of the different components we're gonna to need to build this sieve so we're working on the string outside and one of the things we have to do is we have to build the framework for the sieve so in order to do that there's two sticks at the bottom oh, we need to grab more 
regular wood. Let's do that. So it's two sticks at the bottom, two regular planks, one half slab in the middle, and then two regular pieces of oak wood. And that gives you the regular sieve. There is also a heavy sieve variant, which you can basically compress dirt nine pieces at a time. You can make compressed dirt. It's also a good way to do it. So this actually converts out here really fast. You can see these infested leaves have completely converted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my full wooden crook and I'm going to grab as many of these as we can. You can see we just got a little over a stack, 64 and 9, that's what, 73 pieces of string. So before we go to the quest book, let's quickly, we know we're going to need the mesh. So just by knowing that, let's go over here and create a silk mesh. It's just by combining nine string together. And that's going to give you what you need and you can basically right click on this sieve and there you go it's installed so now let's go in here and collect on some of these quests we've actually completed four of them starting with the hammer we didn't collect that yet let's get that reward bag the sieve frame we can collect that word bag it's going to give us some birch saplings that's up to you use whatever whatever tree you feel comfortable with i like the oak the silk worms we were able to make a piece of string that gave us six apples in another reward bag. And the mesh, which gave us jungle saplings. I would tell you this, avoid using the jungle saplings. Reason being is it's very difficult to remove the trees when it goes past the extent of the ore excavator. So jungle trees have a tendency to grow really tall. And uh, that's not necessarily the best thing when you're in a environment like this where mobs are going to be constantly on your tail. So now let's take some of these new items that we've received and throw them into our chest here. So we're not going to need these things right away. Also this extra string and uh, the the Vestenberg is our airship. We're going we're gonna to use utilize that on day number two. So we do have some food that we've received, and hey, we've got some reward bags. Let's do the RNG game. This is where we pray to RNG Jesus, and we hope that we get some entertaining and useful things. There's two things that we're particularly looking for here. It's either going to be dirt or cobble. One of those two things is going to be great. Now this, the item that we just received, is called Slime Girl. Not only does this give you a companion for your base, which is great, uh, you know, somebody that can hang out with and watch you jump, but she's also very useful for other things. We'll learn about those things later, but just remember, if you get this, don't be disappointed. Be happy. You've got something that's going to help you out later on. So next, we've got an ultra storage, uh, storage box. Again, another tool that's going to be utilized later on. We're not going to need it right now, but it is a good find. 64 dirt. That is exactly what we're looking for. That's like basically winning the lottery on day number one. And we've got another desk belt. Like, we need another desk belt. Come on, guys. Seriously. We got... Normally, my RNG is I usually get diamond builder's wands. One time, I did a run on this, and I got seven builder's wands in a row. And I was like, really? Seriously? But it doesn't necessarily matter. It doesn't stop you uh, if you end up getting things like builder's wands you don't necessarily need the rewards in order to progress in the pack there's things that they give you that are extremely helpful and it will try to basically progress you forward so that what you're looking for out of those reward bags is either dirt or cobble dirt gives you cobble because you can create stones so like for example let's take 16 of this dirt and uh, we're going to put the rest in here along with everything else that's in our inventory just temporarily I want to show you basically what happens when we sift 16 dirt. So some of the things that you're going to get when sifting is you're going to get some stones, you're going to get leaves, you're going to get bushes, you're going to get all kinds of things. And a lot of this information is available in the guide that I've linked in the uh, description. So you're going to be able to go there and it'll tell you all the different things that you're going to get. It kind of gives you an idea of how you're going to progress in the pack. I'm speaking like this. I don't know why. But uh, more importantly is it's just to make sure that uh, you kind of keep yourself on track. You can learn what comes out of dirt. More importantly, if you don't get cobble, this is the way you're going to get cobble. So you're going to take dirt and you're going to basically process it through the sieve. Now, let's just say you don't get dirt, right? Don't worry. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. 
there is a way for you to basically get the items that you need. It's just going to take you a little bit longer, right? So let's just pretend that we didn't get this dirt. So you do is you take eight saplings and you stick it in the wooden barrels. And you can see what this is going to do. This is going to turn into compost. And you can see it does break down fairly fast. It takes literally roughly about 20 seconds or so for this to completely turn from saplings into dirt and then you can slowly start to sieve it and every single dirt piece you're guaranteed to at least get two stones and then there's a 50 percent chance that you're going to get three or four stones so it's something that uh, you know it, it may take a while but there's also you know more quests that you can complete so like if we look inside of here we're basically stuck the next quest that we need to complete is clay in order to get clay you need cobble and the hammer so it's really kind of odd that this is put in that position, but we can concentrate now on getting cobble. So if you look at our inventory, we've got a whole bunch of things. So we've got granite pebbles, we've got seeds, pumpkin seeds, beetroot. We got these things called blackberry bushes, the diorite, a melon seeds, jungle seeds, cactus seeds, strawberry, snozberry. Hey, that is another one of those things we're going to tick off as this is the item that you're looking for when you're sifting dirt. And I'll explain that why in just one second. So that's cool. We're going to put that to the side. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to hang these snozberry bushes. Just like uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. What does a snozberry taste like? I want your comments down below. Tell me, what does a snozberry taste like? Because I'm curious as to uh, what you think a snozberry tastes like. I mean, I, I've heard everything from it tastes like nose, you know, like a snoz. I, I don't know to taste like snozberry like what is a snozberry supposed to taste like it's like what does a banana taste like well it tastes like banana doesn't make much sense until you think about it a little bit anyway let's go where are we going now we're going to move on and basically get our cobble so you see here you had some stone pebbles you can convert these into two by two into cobble we're going to turn that quest in again this time we're going to get spruce saplings and another reward bag so along with this we now have cobblestone and we can go over and grab that hammer that we received earlier that we crafted and we can hold down shift and we can then break this down to uh, gravel and then from gravel we're going to break this down into sand this kind of follows the same progression as it would if you played like Sky Factory 3 or one of those packs, Skyblock packs. Okay, so now we've got dust. So now what happens, right? We're gonna do, we're gonna use this glass bottle, this thing that we got earlier. So how are we gonna use that? Well, I'd like to break a hole here in the side of the wall. And just for safety factor, what I like to do is I like to put a little guardrail in here. I don't want my slime girl falling out the side. So I usually put a half slab there and now we can grab all of the water that we need we got a water source block now I take my two pieces of dust and get the clay it doesn't want this clay however it wants the smaller pieces of clay so you take that you go back to your quest book well, that's my reward bag go to your quest book and now we could turn this in over here for clay and this is going to give us more oak saplings so at this point, we've got our inventory, which is completely jam-packed with a whole bunch of stuff. So this is what I like to do. I like to take some of this extra wood that we've got. We now have eight extra pieces. I like to make myself a second uh, storage container. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to utilize this for anything that comes out of dirt primarily. So we've got stones and anything seed-related. We're going to put all of those things in one place so that way we can locate them later and we don't have to go digging through this main one. In fact, I usually go back in here and take any type of sapling uh, out of this chest just to make sorting a little bit easier. We keep our oak saplings on us and uh, everything else can stay in there. Right? In fact, the uh, extra bottle of water I'm going to put there as well. Hey, it's time to collect on two more quests. Let's see what we get. We got a second uh, Mandaliz. This Mandaliz is a different uh, version of the Slime Girls. So let me take a look. We actually got two of those. So what is the difference here? So let's take a look and see. Well, remember I told you we have a whole bunch of string here. So let's do an experiment. And I'll show you kind of why these two are extremely useful. If, say for example, we used all our bone mill. We'd be like, oh, well, I literally have to wait for that tree to grow. Well, you do and you don't. So there's one thing here that the slime girl can do that the mandalis can't, but literally both of these can give you bone meal. So the first thing we're going to look at is 
what is it that, that, that these guys can do? So from string to gunpowder, and if you look back here, you can go from gunpowder to bones. There you go. Now you need more bone meal, that's one solution. So if you end up with mandalas, that's what you do. If you end up with slime girl, you can use string and you can break this down and you can then convert it to slime ball. It's better, slime girl is actually the better of the two because what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna do this. We are gonna get uh, some slime and that's actually gonna help us with another one of our quests. If we take a look here in our quest book, along the right hand side, there's some various miscellaneous quests, including uh, some berries and things like that. One of those quests is the slime ball. So that's gonna allow us to get, uh, well, manual detect that and sometimes it doesn't necessarily recognize the reason is is that there's more than one type of slime ball so you have to manually recognize that and now you pick another reward bag and away we go so let's go take a look at the quest book now and see what is our next step so we're kind of in the end of day one there's some things that i typically like to do right with these eight all right, with these extra cobblestone one of those things is basically building our first furnace very important that we get this established and put into the wall right away and the reason why is we are going to need some type of fuel so i'm going to take any of the extra wood that i have here and i'm going to place this in here along with our half slabs and we're going to use this to make some charcoal in fact i am going to get more wood to turn into charcoal because i know that we're gonna want a good bit of it. Also, let me go grab my bone meal back out of here. Uh, if you do have bone meal, you are gonna wanna keep about nine pieces for some other things in the future. Uh, we're running out of crooks. We grab a couple more extra pieces of wood here and we'll make ourselves a few more crooks. We can use them. So four more, that'll be pretty good let's get this extra string out of our inventory for now we're not going to need that and let's cook down hey look we got our first mob out of the uh, tree so that's one of the two different types of mobs that you're going to see when you're breaking trees so that uh, that ent which is named dead pine dead pine's a really great guy the uh <laughs> the ent he it's not so great but uh, the, the character that the mob is named after is Dead Pine. He's actually a streamer on Twitch. He's a very nice guy. And yeah, this is the cowpots. These guys multiply like termites, and they are. And these are really bad. So you wanna you wanna try to uh, kill these things off as quickly as possible. And you may not be able to. And what happens is Verdant is like the level of the how difficult these guys are. And you can see one of them is in fact infernal. The problem with the uh, cow pod is these things multiply like rabbits or ants, I guess, and they are extremely dangerous. We're going to want to make sure we keep our health up. This does not necessarily mean that the world is over, so don't necessarily fret and go, oh, well, you know, now that you've got cow pods that are invading your base, like, everything was over. Well, you can, it is possible to defeat these guys. It is going to take a lot of work, but... It's not the end of the world as long as we can kill the majority of them. I think there's one that's up on my roof right now. You need to go, buddy, wherever you are. It might be either that or you're stuck inside the tree. But if you can kill them faster than they spawn, uh, it, it, it's good. It looks like they're actually getting swept away. And if that's the case, then uh, we're okay. We're okay. All right, so we're good. No worries. All right, now the other thing, like I was saying, I was trying to get more wood so that way we can make charcoal, and hopefully he doesn't come back because he's just going to give us a headache. But uh, we've got some other quests that we can take care of in the meantime here as well. One of those is the watering can. So we're going to take a look at the recipe for the watering can. And uh, you see here, basically, it's this guy. It looks like the resident sleeper emote. So we need cobble, we need wood, and we need... A piece of bone meal so we do have some extra wood here on us uh, well we're gonna steal a couple pieces out of the uh, out of the furnace so let's get let's break down some of these so we're gonna need some wood we're gonna need some cobble look at that recipe one more time you can see we need four pieces of cobble 
So let's go ahead and grab like a, another 12 pieces of dirt. That should be more than enough to uh, get us enough stones to do what we need to do. And uh, we'll go from there. So we'll break this down quickly. And uh, we'll go from there. So it's, we need four more pieces of cobble in order to get our watering can. And once you get the watering can, you basically don't have as much of a necessity or a need to rely on bone meal anymore. So, you know, you can work up to this slowly, or in my case, because I was rewarded with a stack of dirt, this allows us to, uh, to kind of get there quicker. So, like I said, you're going to get three to four, if not five stones from every single piece of dirt that you uh, throw in. And we should have a stack of stone pebbles. There we go. There we go. We got eight more. So that's enough to be able to complete our quest. But before I do that, let me just empty my inventory again from all these extra items that we got. Because we got a ton of stuff that's just going to clog up our inventory. So we're better off getting it out now. Don't really need any of this stuff clogging our inventory. All right, cool. So now we can take the four pieces of cobble. And oh, before we do that, uh, we probably should make the bowl. Because if we fill up our inventory with other things, we don't have any room to make the bowl. So make that. It's the same recipe uh, that you would have in most other packs, kitchen sink packs. Except for the watering can kind of looks like a resident sleeper head. So there is a quest in here uh, that's called Simply OP. It wants you to basically use a snozberry bush to create something called a juicer. And uh, in order to make a juicer, we're going to need stone. So there is a quick and simple way to get stone that doesn't require you to basically cook it. And one of those things is taking like these diorite pebbles and making diorite and then i think we also had some granites uh, yeah okay i grabbed it that time and we're gonna take the granites and also the andesite and what we're gonna start doing with these is making stone slabs so we can take advantage of a mechanic that's well that's not the, i don't want those we could take advantage of a mechanic in this pack that converts stone slabs into stone blocks. So if you take two stone slabs and you combine them back into stone, you don't need to have the uh, you know the furnace to cook that down. So one of the things we need is a button, and then we combine the button with just two pieces of stone, and that gives us a juicer. Then we need to produce a berry off of one of these bushes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a snozberry bush, but because the snozberry bush was part of our quest, it's just easier to throw them up there. <clears throat> so as you hold down the watering can, it looks like you're punching the bush, but in fact we are watering it. It's just kind of hard to see that. But the particle effects are there, you just don't see them because they're up above on the half slab. You can see it? There we go. There is our first snozberry so we combine that with the juicer and our 2x2 two two crafting grid and there we go we got snozberry juice which in fact is a very good uh, food source as it gives you two uh, chicken nuggets and almost what six bars of saturation and you can see we can now turn that quest in and boom another reward back so there we go we've made our way through the beginning portions of the, uh, the quest book the next thing is this one here it's called offensive tactics and this is going to where you really need to start making some important decisions so a stone spear is not very difficult to make in fact it's more simple than you could possibly imagine so what I'm going to do is just going to put two sticks in backwards and then one stone up in the left hand corner and that's going to give you a stone spear this is one of the strongest weapons in the game uh, due to certain variants like if you wanted to make an emerald uh, stone spear an emerald spear not an emerald stone spear an emerald spear that is a, a pretty powerful weapon in fact this is five damage and it, it, it's a pretty decent weapon 
uh, not necessarily the stone variant, but it's important. It's a good weapon because it has the ability to break webs. Like uh, if you got captured in a web, a spider web, uh, it breaks those very easily. And if you know Lycanite mobs, you'll know that there's a lot of those Lycanite mobs that like to apply slow. And when it applies the slow, uh, you know, ability, it puts spider webs at your feet. So, you know, this allows you to break them fairly quickly. So that's a good thing to have. And here is where the important thing is, right? So don't get too hung up on this banana pet and wondering kind of what does this thing do? Let's just say it's it's kind of a disappointment when it comes to pets. It's pretty cool, but it's it's not really where you need to kind of concentrate. What you need to concentrate on is this choice here. So you can choose between a tool forge and a guardian bow. Guardian bow is, is something that comes out of the armor plus mod. Guardian bow is actually a very good tool, but not one that you're going to want to invest in at this point in the game. There's really no need to have a guardian bow. You have no necessity for it, but you will do and you do need to have the tool forge. Let me just say that you can craft uh, Tinker's tools immediately by having the tool forge. So things like making shurikens and high powered tools from ingots does not require the uh, different casts from the smeltery. You can actually just take an ingot and put it directly into the parts builder and get your tools relatively easy. So if I had to make a choice, a tool forge is most important. It costs almost four blocks of whatever you're going to use. Four blocks of aluminum, four blocks of iron. And then it also takes seared stone and it takes a crafting table or the, your, your um, crafting station. Uh, your tool station, sorry. It is very expensive. So if I had a choice, go with the tool station. Now, just to give you a little bit of heads up on what this banana pet does, is it, it, uh, it will basically be able to auto retrieve you could throw it and uh, it'll go out and it'll it'll retrieve things it, it, to me it's kind of a um, kind of a useless pet in the sense that it doesn't really do much and it requires it, it it needs glowstone to feed on and glowstone is a commodity that we're gonna need for a lot of things and we just don't have the room to feed a banana pet all right, so we do get two more reward bags. Let's say, uh, let's see what we got out of those. 64 more dirt and a diamond builder's one. So two really awesome things that are going to be very useful. So we, we can now turn in some other quests. The, the watering can one we never turned in. And uh, yeah, so that is another reward bag that we can collect. Boom, and we've got ourselves a second ultra storage box. So then at this point, uh, you, we've got enough resources to kind of start being, you know, crafty here. So there, let's take a look at what is the next task. We want to concentrate on clearing out the tasks that are on this row right here. So the next one is a crucible. So we had that clay from earlier that we, uh, we were able to collect see we have it in our inventory right now so in order to make a crucible you need to combine clay with bone meal uh, yeah did you see that that right there that was a roa fish he's actually in the water over here somewhere and uh, what he's literally trying to do is he's literally trying to suck us out of our base now imagine if we were just on a flat platform we would literally be at this point in the water so keep that in mind. He is uh, he is a boss that you do not want, or not a boss, but a mob that you do not want to go and face, you know, with an open base. You you will not live very long. All right. So now we've got an unfired crucible, and that's going to require us to throw this in here. We can do that quickly. We can grab all the extra charcoal that we made, and we can throw our unfired crucible in. Uh, this is going to allow us to basically get a fired crucible. You want to basically do the same thing with this. You want to basically hit auto complete in the quest book. So when we bring this up, you can see that it doesn't detect it. You have to hit manual detect, and now you can select your reward bag. 
Let's see what we got there in the reward bag. We got four hoppers. Four hoppers is actually a really good find. And it's going to be really useful later on. So we also got some other things in some of those quests. Like we got some acacia seeds, acacia saplings. We also got a cup of coffee. <coughs> All those are really great, but kind of something that you can overlook for the moment as we continue on in our beginning early quests. So at this point, there's one goal. The goal is to gather and get iron, right? So there's two ways to get iron at this point in this pack. Uh, either you can build a mob farm, which you can, don't question it, it's the way the mod works, it's the way the mod pack is designed. Ores are dropped from mobs. I know it's crazy, but if you look over here on the right, you'll see if we click on any of these, ender eyes give you gold and tin, and you can look at uh, skeletons, they give you redstone and silver. Zombies give you iron and copper and so forth. All the different mobs give you different ores. It's interesting, but the mechanic is there. Regardless of the fact that we don't have ores, there is some machines that are available to us early on that we can use to help us to double our ores. So that way from day one, we're ready and prepared that when we receive those ores, we can start utilizing them in doubling. One of those things is this thing. It's called a grinder. It's actually really cool. So let's go in here. I'm going to check in any eye, and I'm going to take a look at what is the recipe for a grinder. And you see, this is actually relatively easy. So you can use three pieces of any of the different stones that we collect, a couple pieces of cobblestone wall, some cobble, regular cobblestone, and some flint. So the flint recipe is relatively easy. Uh, if we have some gravel, which we'll, we'll get that first because it's just relatively easy to get here. So let's take our wooden hammer and break this down into gravel. We take three pieces of gravel and make it like that. That's how you get flint, at least an easy way to get flint. Besides that, we are going to need some more stone here in order to complete the next portion of our quest. So the best thing for us to do would be to uh, use some more of our dirt that we got here. So let's break this down into another 16 pieces. And also just gonna basically clear out my entire inventory here in order to, uh, you know, have all these items go where we need them to. So let's take and sift this next 16 pieces of dirt here. So I'm gonna break this down and uh, get everything that we need. So the quick start guide is really going to cover everything that you need to do from day number one. So a lot of things that you can accomplish and that you should accomplish. Not that you really uh, will accomplish all these things and as you play this pack you'll learn how things work and what you need to get started. There really isn't much that you can differ from from what I've shown you thus far regardless of how you start the pack. You've got to complete all these tasks anyway just showing you some different variants and ways for you to get to the end point and uh, you know as long as you follow along then you'll be perfectly fine uh, you don't need to necessarily do all this in day one it is possible it's only 1 25 a.m. we still got plenty of time to get into the airship in the morning we got plenty of fuel to get up in the air all right so we got some more stones I'm gonna combine these up we gives us another 12 we do need uh, some fences, so let's combine and make those now. We do also need some diorite and things like that, so let's make that up. I don't believe we're going to have enough here, but let's see what we end up with. Alright, so we end up with a few, but now if I remember correctly, we do have some of these items also in our chest over here, so it looks like we do have enough granite that uh, we should be able to make this grinder at this point. So it's saying we're missing the flint. Let's grab that. And now we should have everything we need to make the grinder. So in order to make this work, you actually need to make a pressure plate. So the grinder is pretty cool. So we'll, we'll just place this down here and you can basically stick ores in and it, as you use it, you can grind them down. So in order to make it work, you need to have a pressure plate. So two stones and we now have a pressure plate that we can use now this can't be walked on you can't uh, put two of them together you can only use one and how it works is by a full jump 
and that's how it ends up grinding whatever you stick in here. So right now we don't really have anything to grind up. So we can, in the meantime, what we can do is empty our inventory of all these things that we got, all the different seeds and bushes and all that kind of stuff that we're not going to use at the moment. Uh, we also got this uh, crucible that we can now start sticking up on the wall. And this is going to be important, right? So we'll find a spot. I'm actually going to put this above a torch. As this torch will now be able to heat up that crucible, we should have uh, some extra cobble. Four pieces is all it takes in order to make a, a bucket of lava. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to get the lava out of the crucible. That's the reason why we need to go and find uh, a source for that. So, uh, let us get some tools ready in order to uh, get out there. Uh, I'm going to take another 16 pieces of dirt and try to get more cobble because I'd like to get uh, a stone axe. I also like to get a stone pick so that way if we do find some iron, we have a tool that's up to the level that's able to mine the, uh, the iron out on those little bitty islands out there. So, take this dirt here and sift up a little bit more. We only really need to get uh, 12 stones in order to make three pieces of uh, cobble. But let's see what we get here. We, like I said, we still got plenty of time. It's about 4.30 a.m. and daylight starts at 6 a.m. That's the, that's the time that you're able to get out of your base and uh, everything that you see, all those red dots up there on the mini-map, those will start to disappear at around 6 a.m. So there is two things we need to do before 6 a.m. And that is we're going to need to be able to get up on top of the roof here in order to make a platform. So let's take the three pieces of oak wood that we have here and let's start thinking about making ourselves some ladders. So what I usually do is I try to make like six ladders or nine. That's fine. And what I do is I put this up here in the corner. That's gonna, whoop, I don't want that there. I wanna put that on the front wall. And then I usually make a hole. Okay, and that's how we're gonna get onto our roof. So we do have the Vestenberg, and we do have our charcoal, and we do have plenty of stone at this point to make the, uh, the tools that we need. Let's also get all these different items out of our inventory, all these extra saplings and bushes and everything else under the sun. All right, now we can make our stone pick. There we go, and that's gonna go in inventory. We don't need the hammer with us, and I do like to take like a, an extra piece of wood and sticks and anything like that that we can. Um, for now, everything else is good. Make sure that we're filled up on food, and you can see all the things on the mini map are starting to disappear. So that means take a peek outside of here and make sure that we don't have any birds in our immediate vicinity. I don't see any. Alright, so that's the next step. Let's get up here on the roof. We could shift, right click, and there is our magical airship. It is pretty cool. So get inside of it by right clicking, hit Y, and let's throw all of our charcoal in and hold space bar and that's going to allow us to get up in the air. I'm curious to see what this little guy is over there, but before we go there, uh, there is a castle structure that's over here and I can tell you this is the way you want to go you want to hit every single one of these castles that you can find there well they're not filled with a ton of things but they're filled with important items there's two three actually three things on these islands that's important one it contains a chest that chest is like a dungeon chest it contains some very useful tools that you're going to want to use, including armor that may have enchantments on it, including such things as Last Stand. You are going to want to check these chests. This is a, a big fast forward. There's also obsidian. Now you say, you know, why would I want obsidian? Well, if you find a diamond pick in this chest, or tools to be able to make a pick that's comparable to a diamond pick, you want to take the obsidian. Uh, it is going to be useful for so many things. Tools, 
armor. You name it, the obsidian is really useful. Also, like things like the fence gates and stuff like that, the uh, the stone gates. One word of note: do not press shift. That is not how you control this. It is actually X that allows you to go down. And uh, controls are W A R A S D and W. It's X that you use to go down, not shift. So let's drive into this here. Press X, get down, hold shift to jump off the boat here. Let's check our chests, and there we go. We've got fire protection, unbreaking, and soulbound. And we also got this thing here, which is black quartz. All right, so this is what's going to be important here. Black quartz is comparably uh, on the same level as diamond. So let's go in here. We're going to take this wood to make ourselves a crafting station. And instead of using our stone pick, we are literally going to use the extra materials that we have in order to craft a black quartz pick. And that's what we're going to use to bust a hole into the wall over here and grab this obsidian. So I am using vein miner. You have to hold shift to use it. And we want to collect as much of this obsidian as we can. It should get it all in one go. I believe, I think this quartz should be at the right level. I don't, it may not be actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, this might not be the right level. But we did see another castle out there. So, okay, well, look, the quartz uh, may not be at the right level, but that's okay. There is another castle over here in the distance. We're going to visit that one as well. And then we keep an eye on where your base is. It does have journey map, so you may want to mark off your base location before you go out. <clears throat> Let's talk about one important thing here. The airship is almost as slow or slower than if you were walking, literally. It is super duper slow. So right now it's 10.30 a.m. Uh, it gets dark at about 7 o'clock. If you have not started to return back to your base by like 2 30 3 o'clock you're better off staying in these structures like the castle putting a roof over your head putting yourself in a little small box whatever you can do to uh, to basically make yourself shelter for the night don't risk it by trying to fly home at 7 p.m. because you're not going to make it very far. So let's see now. We're going to fly into the base. I see another castle off in the distance. To me, that's like that's like visual gold. As uh, we know, like I already told you, that there's some pretty badass things. Last stand two, and yes, we we just got a very OP item. Got two very OP items. To me, this here is one of the most important pieces of. Uh, materials in the game by far and there's a, there, the last stand is uh, an amazing piece of equipment that will save your life many times over so we can talk about these other little islands that we see out here a lot of these are going to contain the resources that we're in need of so primarily we're gonna need iron in order to get uh, buckets I mean if we can't get out to an island we don't have an island that it's okay we don't have to go exploring on islands if you find doing that is difficult there's very re many reasons as to why it can be difficult but if you find that exploring to the islands is too difficult make a mob farm on your base 25 blocks away like you would in the sky factory because there's nothing else around mobs will spawn really quick and you can get iron in no time flat just remember when you build your platform you want to start up off of the water you do not want to build at water level because it is definitely not a good idea just, just take my word for it. It, it is not, uh, not where you want to be. So we got look, we got diamonds, we got iron. We don't even have to go to one of those little small, little itty bitty islands because 
we uh, we quite literally cleaned up on uh, on everything. And oh, I keep on forgetting to get this. Uh, glowstone is ultra important too. Now it's two o'clock, and it is literally going to be time for us to start getting ourselves back to our base. Now, I mean, it's like, oh well, you know, it's only two o'clock. You realistically, you should have time to go visit these islands. And uh, what I'm going to say is that isn't necessarily true. All right, so we know our, our, our building's just over here underneath the slime island. So we're going to get back to our base. <clears throat> so we still should see the base here in the distance any minute now. Actually, I'm gonna check my map. There it is. Okay, so we're heading in the right direction. Just got scared there for a minute that uh, we weren't heading in the right direction. <laughs> but it's just on the other side of this slime island. Alright, so like I said, the now what we're going to use the uh, iron for, make two buckets, there's a quest to basically make a cobble generator, just like, you know, typical Sky Factory and other mod packs. It's about finding a way to create resources. So, you know, with the trees, we can create an endless amount of wood with the combination of our saplings and our watering can. We now need a way to make stone and that is going to come from our cobble generator and then unlike typical uh, sky factory style mod packs that require you literally to build lava and water and make like a non you know a traditional uh you know a traditional you know cobblestone generator there's actually a, a mod in this for the cobblestone generator so it's not going to require you to uh, build some kind of extravagant structure. So take a look at our time. It's right now 4.33. You can see uh, the distance that we have left to get back to our base here, which is a little over 100 blocks. We're going to make it back to our base at about 5.30. If we stretched it any longer and visited one of those other islands, yeah, we, w we may not be so lucky in getting back to our base. So... This is a good good opportunity to kind of take a look at the little base that we've created. And you can see, you know, the structure, little island with a little building, how it's basically designed, and why is it a good starting structure. And uh, you know, just from seeing it from afar, I think you can kind of appreciate kind of why it's important. And uh, you know, all right, we're back and. While we're here, let's actually work on a couple things. Well, we have enough iron to basically make our two buckets. So let's do that first. And then I'd like to get our watering can and some saplings here. And I need to get some more wood and get some wood quickly. And I'll show you the reasons why. One of the things is I like to put a, uh, a trap door on that hole we created to get up on the roof just so we don't have anything fall in we don't have anything spawn in to our base i'd rather you know i'd rather be safe than sorry all right so let's take and use some of this wood make a sideways door and you get literally that you get a wooden trap door i usually put it on the back here so i face i go with put my back to the ladder and then there you go so then when you open it it opens away and yeah anyway so that's done and if you look up here in our crucible we should now have lava so we grab one bucket of lava and we grab one bucket of water and we take a look at our quest book here which i believe is in our inventory there we go and you can see, after the uh, the grinder, which we didn't collect the reward back yet, we have 
this guy, which is down here, the cobblestone generator. So we can take a look at this. This actually comes in different variants and different tiers. But if we look at the cobblestone generator, see here in just a moment, you can see it comes in tier one, tier two, three, four, five. The tier one uh, generates one cobblestone every 40 ticks, which is every two seconds. So in order to get this, we need basically some cobble, a piece of glass, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's take what we have here and we need to start getting ourselves a piece of glass. I don't think we have our hammer on us. So let's grab that and break down this cobble to gravel and then from gravel to sand and then pop this in here and cook that up into glass and we should have everything we need in order to uh, in order to make this cobblestone generator. One of the things I like to do is force the uh, cobblestone generator into something like a supply crate or a storage drawer. And we have an extra chest here. I'm gonna put this up here and all the junk that we found on that little mini island, I'm just gonna throw this up here for now and I'm gonna start cleaning out the inventory of things that we need versus stuff that we found. We need more wood. Uh, would I put my saplings up there? I did. All right, so let's grab our saplings. I need some more wood. So you gotta be careful when you lean out of the side of your door here. These birds will try to attack you um, if you if you lean out too far. So fortunately, uh, with this kind of structure, most of the time they don't even see us standing here. So we don't have to worry about, oh, there we go. Hey, we got all kinds of dead pines. Alrighty then. I think we got another one up on our roof here. That's alright, he can, he can hang out there for a while as we got 54 wood off of that. Alright, so the thing that I like to make for the uh, cobblestone generator which now, by the way, we have enough materials for, like we were talking about. Let's uh, let's go through here and make that first before we do anything else. So cobblestone generator. All right, so that can literally go pretty much anywhere. I'm gonna put this over here. Where's my pick? Let's break the, uh, the bell off the floor here. Put the cobblestone generator right there for now and like I said it's gonna start making cobble but you need somewhere to output it into so the, what I usually do is uh, like I said I for me I like to make uh, storage crates small storage crates just what I like to do like I said you could make a storage drawer you know you could input this stuff into like an input port on easy storage but for me it's this that I like to use. So it's gonna ask us to make four chests. You can actually just make it by putting eight pieces of wood. That'll give you four chests. It's actually a very simple way to do it. Then inside of here, we need this thing called a wood casing. It requires regular wood, some planks, and some sticks. So we need to create those things, make some sticks. You can put two pieces of wood together. It gives you 16 sticks. And uh, you know, we'll get enough materials here to create this. So let's quickly create the wood casing and go back in here and we should have everything we need to create this small storage crate put this on top of the cobble gen and you can see it is now creating cobblestone it may not seem like it's going very fast in fact uh, in order to make the second tier of the cobble generator it is relatively cheap it's not expensive at all it's just basically surrounding the tier one cobble generator with a bunch of iron and that'll get you a tier two. Uh, we didn't make that, so we can turn that as a quest. It also gives us a villager. We don't necessarily want to use the villager right now, so we're just going to place that up there. Let's take a look at some of these remaining quests that we have. <clears throat> to me, there is a couple few, a couple more quests here. One including a stone barrel, some open modular turrets, the easy storage, uh, carbon quest, a workbench quest, and a whole bunch of other things, including making a mob farm. At this point, though, what I consider this to be is the end of 
the quick guide day one and day two. This is the point where we're going to stop on this video. So we'll make make our quick start guide to two different videos. This is the end of video number one. Hopefully you're enjoying Sink in the Madness. It uh, supposedly is being released, full released, as of uh, early November. So if you're watching this video, there may be some small changes in the in the in the latest release of the mod pack. But generically speaking, this is the one of the best ways to get started in the pack. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Definitely, uh, if you're playing the pack, leave a comment below. You know, give. Uh, Give some uh, thanks to the mod makers, this is M1 Jordan Allen and uh, John Bams. And if you haven't given a chance yet, at some point in the near future, you're gonna be able to play Mad Pack 4, which is another great pack from these guys. Remember, guys, thank you for following. Thank you for watching. If you don't haven't already, please hit the follow button, and uh, you know, please subscribe if you're on YouTube. Come over and check us out on Twitch. We do play a part time. I am a full time. You know, I work full time and I stream at night when I can. So it's been great having you guys here today, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.